Hey guys, I have here the Crucial P3 Plus 4TB PCIe 4.0 NVMe M2 SSD. On the front of the box, it says that it can read up to 4800 megabytes per second, which is really, really, really fast. And on their website, the sequential write is 4100 megabytes per second, which is also really good. And the SSD endurance is 800 terabyte. All these read and write speed are if the device is being used in the most optimal condition. Here Here's the device, the Crucial P3 Plus. You can see it is small, it is a standard M2 2280. I will be using this P3 Plus with my Sabrent enclosure as an external hard drive or external SSD. And with the speeds that the P3 Plus can offer, it should be a breeze. The Sabrent enclosure does come with the enclosure itself and a USB-C to USB-C cable. This is a really fast USB-C data cable. You know, with all this speed, the Crucial P3 Plus is going to get really hot and this is why the Sabrent Sabrent enclosure does have an aluminum housing on the top. The aluminum housing on the top is going to help with the dissipation of the heat. It even have a pre-installed heat dissipation pad and at the bottom you have the M2 board where you're going to insert your P3 Plus or any other M2 SSD 2242, 2260 and 2280. Since this is a very simple enclosure, you can add more thermal cooling pad on the inside in order to expedite the heat dissipation. If you're going to install the p3 plus on a computer directly you need to remove the back housing of the computer and then locate the area where you need to insert the new 2280 and just install it make sure that you back up all your files before you do the installation of the new ssd and after the installation of the new ssd you need to reinstall the operating system on the new ssd and you should be good to go if you have an enclosure like this it is going to be easier you're going to format the new ssd and do the installation of the operating system and after that you just remove the new ssd that is inside the enclosure and install it inside your desktop or your pc and it is going to run directly with the operating system for the installation of the ssd the p3 plus you need to insert it at an angle of 45 degree and after that you just press down on it there is a small mechanism at the bottom that is going to lock the ssd in place so you need to prepare that area in order for the ssd to go through that small section and after that you need to lock the ssd in place if your ssd is smaller or shorter you need to use the small pin that came with the Sabrent enclosure in order to lock the SSD in place. The Sabrent enclosure is using USB 3.2 type C and it can have backward compatibility for devices that do not support USB 3.2. On their website they are rating this USB C 3.2 up to a 1000 megabyte per second that's maximum. On the first run I was getting 655 megabyte per second in writing speed and around 400 megabyte per second in reading speed on the second try i got 670 in writing and 402 in reading these are good numbers but it is limited primarily because i'm using a m1 macbook pro if i had thunderbolts 4 the speeds would be much higher than this let me show you what type of speed i get with the sandisk extreme pro this is the first ssd that i purchased i didn't have any issues with it it is really excellent i got 630 as writing speed and 610 as read speed i'm getting a new ssd because the sandisk is only 2 terabyte. On the second try I got 411 megabyte per second and the read speed will be around 500. So let's go back to the 4 terabyte and test it again so that we can see what kind of numbers we get for the final XFAT test. So this time I was able to get 660 megabyte per second as writing speed and I got around 400 but most of the time below 400 megabyte per second as reading speed. This is a decent SSD you get the most out of your money megabyte per dollars so next i'm going to format the ssd again into apfs and do the test once again and compare it to the first test that we did one thing that you need to know before you format your ssd or your hard drive into apfs it might be a little bit faster if you're using it with a mac but it is only compatible with a mac apfs is convenient but if you try to plug it into a windows pc or another type of operating system it will not work i said it is a little bit faster but do you want to trade those additional megabyte with using it only with a mac the choice is very easy if you have only mac computers on the first try testing the apfs format i was able to get 872 megabyte per second as writing speed and 517 megabyte per second as reading speed by going apfs i was able to get around 200 megabyte more for writing and i also got 120 megabyte for reading so we can clearly see that going apfs in a macbook 
it is a better solution you're going to get a more higher speed for writing and a more higher speed for reading i haven't told you do you know what kind of format i have on the sandisk ssd pro so what i just did was to swap the cables i'm using the sandisk cable with the sabrant enclosure and i was able to get 872 megabyte per second as writing and 523 as reading so on the sandisk extreme pro that i'm using the two terabyte memory it has a format of xfat what i like with the sandisk is that it gets the consistency right it is always between 400 to 500 megabyte per second read and write always even if it is very hot it still gives you the same performance this time i got 637 as writing and 611 as reading speed i think it is always better to have a read and write speed as close as possible in all the situations that you have while working with your ssd the separate enclosure with the ssd inside the sandisk does deliver the same performance